Hello everybody and welcome to the initial episode of the new OpenGL basic tutorial series. In this tutorial I'll just show you how to set up a basic SDL window with an OpenGL render. So I'll be using uh, Visual Studio 2013 for this, but you can follow these tutorials if you have the version 2010 or above I believe. So let's just create a new project and if we just go to Visual C++, Windows 32 console application, we can just, um, let's name our application, let's say basic tutorials. And I've already um, specified my, you can specify the location of your project here, or I've already specified my location as my, the folder of my GitHub repository, but the default location will be in your documents folder. So you can change that if you want. So let me just click OK, and let's go next. And I'm also going to add the empty project as my additional option, because I don't want any additional files that I don't really need. So. To follow these tutorials, it's also highly recommended that you're familiar with the C++ syntax because I won't really be focusing on the C++ implementation that much, only on, on the OpenGL part of it. So let's just create a new file and let's write a basic C++ application. Okay, so if you're trying to write this Everything seems to be working just fine. Now we'll need to actually include and include the functions that we'll need for OpenGL and SDL to actually set up a window. So if you go to my GitHub account, you can go to my basic OpenGL tutorials repository. And as you can see, I've already um, added the dependencies on here that we'll need for the project and also the DLLs. If we just look into the dependencies, we can see the include and library folder. So if we go to include, we'll need the GL folder and in here we have the gl.h header and the glue.h header. We will need the gl.h header, not right now, but maybe in the next tutorial and the glue.h header maybe a bit later. Uh, if we go to SDL2 headers, we can just see all of the headers that come with the SDL2 library. You can also download all of these yourselves if you want, but there won't be the same version as I have because I don't really have the latest versions, but I don't think it really matters if you have the latest version, there shouldn't really be much difference at all. So if we go to libraries, we just have OpenGL32 library that, and in here and the SDL2 library. So if we go just back to my repository, if we check the DLL folder, you'll definitely need the SDL2 DLL because we'll need this to create the window and handling some input and stuff like that. But for other three DLLs, uh, you'll need this on some computers because some of them lack them in the System32 uh, folder. So if you also have any other DLLs that are missing, please comment um, below. Tell, tell me in the comments below their names so I can add them to the repository. So if I just go back, if you download these two folders, you can just copy the dependencies into your solution directory. And once you have the solution and the dependencies folder in the same uh, directory, we can just go back to Visual Studio. From then we can just go to the project properties. And if we just um, take a look at the configuration up here, so currently we're in the active debug, uh, the current uh, active debug configuration. This basically means um, the debug configuration basically is used when we're developing the application, when we're actually debugging the variables, stuff like that. And we're actually when we're using the release uh, configuration, we're actually shipping the application. So this will make the application run much faster, but there won't be any uh, debug debug options in this configuration. So we can set for which configuration we're actually going to set up the libraries. So if we go, let's say to all configurations, we're just going to set it for both configurations. So if we just go to C++ and general, here you can see the additional include directories and we can just add this and go to, if you go to macros, we can see some Visual Studio variables in here. So we're actually searching for a variable that contains the path to our solution file. So basically this path. So if we go to, if we search here, um, the solution there, this variable will contain the precise value we require. So if we just go to additional include directories up here, we can just type in solution 
there and this variable will contain our uh, solution file uh, directory. So this already contains the trailing backslash, so we can just write dependencies and include where we have our include files. So if I go in here uh, to my solution and go to dependencies, include, and we have two folders that we need to include. So if we just go back and to the, we also have to do this for the libraries. If you go to linker and general, we can see the additional library directories option. And if we add this, similarly with the headers, we can just type in solution there and dependencies and this time lib. Okay, now we have uh, the libraries, uh, the additional library directories. Now we can actually specify which libraries we're actually going to use. As you can see, there's already a list of some libraries up here in the additional dependencies, but we need some of them, so we're just going to leave those alone. We have to just include our two li uh, libraries, which are sdl2.lib and opengl32.lib. We don't actually need the opengl library this uh, in this video because we're just gonna setting up we're just gonna be setting up an SDL window. So once we've done that, we can actually go in here and include our SDL headers. So if we just go to SDL2 and if we include the SDL header. Now as you can see the main na the name of the main function actually changed color. So this means this happens because there's also there's already a definition of main in the header of SDL. So if we try to run this, we'll basically get an error that says we're missing the main function. If we just comment this out, we can see that we get the same error. So for this, we'll have to actually undefine the main name. So if we just type in undef and main, and now everything should be working just fine. Okay, our application works now, and now we can actually start working with an actual window. So let's just create a simple window. This will be a pointer because the function for creating a window will create a pointer. So SDL create window, uh, create window. And this will take in, the first parameter will be the name of our screen. So let's just type in, let's say basic tutorials, tutorials. And the second parameter will actually be the starting location of our window. So if we type in, for example, as you can see from the description of the function, uh, SDL window pause centered, this will actually uh, make the window be centered on your screen when you uh, launch the application. But I'm just gonna write 50-50 for X and Y right now because why not? Uh, you can experiment with other values yourself. The next parameter will be the window, window width, which I will just specify as 12.8 by 720 in height, but the last parameter will be flags, and here we have to specify that we're gonna be working with an OpenGL window. So we just type in window, SDL window, OpenGL. Okay, so now that we have our window, we can create an OpenGL renderer, not the render, a context, and we're just gonna name it context, and we create this with SDLGL create context, and we just pass in the SDL window. So now that we have our window in the context, before we exit the application, we actually have to exit SDL and also clean up both the window and the context. So if we wrote, uh, reload the application, we don't get any memory leaks, for example. So we just type in SDL quit, which will quit our window that we create with SDL. And then we can destroy the window destroy window and if we just pass in the window in here window and now we have to destroy the delete context 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 okay now if we try to run this application you'll see we're missing the sdl to dll which i've already stated before we will need so if you downloaded both of the um both of the folders from my repository, you'll have the DLL files and we can just copy all of them and paste them. We can go to our basic tutorial solution 
and in here we'll see a debug folder which will, the Visual Studio will create because we're running in debug configuration and if we go in here we can see the executable file this is basically the runtime directory of our application so we can just paste in the DLLs in here and if we run the application now everything seems to be working just fine but you can see the window will just open for a split second because we're not actually we're, after we create the window we're instantly closing it so we can just write an empty while loop to just hold the application in place so if we try to run this you can see we actually get the window up but we can't really interact with them that's because we can't really interact with it that's because we aren't actually handling any um, any any events yet so we handle events in SDL with um, we first have to create an SDL event then we go into our main loop and then we have to check if there were any events present so we do that with uh, SDL poll event but because there are multiple events that can occur per one frame we'll have to write a while function for this to go through all of the events so if we just go SDL poll event and we'll have to pass a pointer to the event in here so this will now store the last event into our event variable so if we try to run this you can see we can actually interact with the window now we can actually minimize it and but we can't yet close it because we haven't yet specified what happens when we encounter a close on an exit event or an exit event Okay, so because we're actually in a double loop in here, we're gonna create a temporary variable and let's just create a bool uh, break and I'm gonna set it to false and if this is true, we're just gonna break it out, break out of the main loop. We could also use the go to statement, but when dealing with double loops, I'm not really a big fan of that. So now let's check if the event was actually event type was actually an SDL quit event and if this occurs we can actually set the break to true and this should exit our application when we close the exit button so if we try to close the application it closes yay okay so we're actually um, still having the console open because we still have this std sync at the end of the function here so we're just gonna delete this at the moment and now it would it would also be functional um, to have sort of a to break out of the window when let's say a button is pressed for example escape button so we can handle button presses in SDL with um, checking if event type was the SDL, SDL key down and then we have to check which key was pressed so we just check event that um, dot sim dot sim and if this is equal to sdlk escape we can similarly similarly with the quit function with the quit event we can just break out of the main loop break it through so if we try to run this now if we try pressing the escape button the application will close I will probably talk more about different events in the future tutorials, but for now this will do. So anyways, thanks for watching this video, if you like the video like it, and if you would like to see more videos in the basic tutorial series, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, also I'm gonna be uploading some more complex tutorials in the future, and all of the source code of these tutorials will be on my GitHub repository. Um, this one will be in the basic tutorials repository. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.